You live? Get on there, Gary. We're live. Gary. Okay, mate. It's all good. See you there, mate. So that's perfect, I think, that. Yeah. Now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, so, guys, we'll show you. Yeah, yeah. Gary, Taro. Here we go. You're my big brother. Move over a bit there, mate. Like yeah, I'm just going to be the boy. Yeah. <laughs> Then what I'll do is we'll control there. There's one on. Oh, yeah. We'll just control them. Comments. Come on, we'll the comments. Just leave them. We'll answer comments. 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 we Brian Cockrell Show, the tax man, and with me brother, Gary Taz Carroll from Scotland, Dundee, and with his pal, Mike, he's with us as well from Dundee, we had a good laugh, sorry we were a little bit late, but the guys are about to travel all the way down from Dundee. Gary, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you, Again, Brian. This is Again, this is, uh, love him a bit, he's my brother. Right. Gary, what do you want to talk about? Well, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for you guys feeding us, and uh, I'm still having a little drink of the wine. That's no problem whatsoever. So, Gary... Can we go back to when you? We've already done the pest interview, so we'll go past a little bit. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, every, not a lot of people know, but you were in the army. What, what, how did you get into the army? Right, from an early we'll go age. Past, from, go past the schools, Andy. We'll go yeah, straight yeah, to the yeah, army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From an early age when I went away, like at yeah. 17, yeah. Yeah. And I got in the motorway, and I always thought that would stop me from getting into trouble, Brian, yeah. Right. And uh, nine times out of ten, it does. Takes the young lads who went uh, like a place like uh, either getting a career, yeah, mechanics, yeah, in RAF, whatever, and they get a trade to come out on a semi street, yeah, even drivers, HGV, yeah. all the rest of it, you get it, yeah, you understand, yeah, you're going to get yourself, yeah. you know, you know, the way they the teach everything, yeah. Cool, yeah, yeah, look yeah, look after yourself. The only thing they taught me to do was sort of fucking kill me, right? And excuse my French yeah. when I'll take that back, but um, yeah. uh, I did because it was a parachute regiment soldier, which means that it's trained to the highest level in violence. Yeah, and uh, from that, if you don't go there after that, yeah, normally head up to a place called uh, 22 Elephant, where a lot of our guys in them days, 75% of the regiment up there, or 80% was made up of ex-Palace Regiment soldiers. Right. And me obviously wanting more action, more and more action, I just saw my way up, but where I was get out, go back down the and head over to French Foreign Legion. Because they were all over Africa, calling me in. Yeah. And for some reason, I just had this thing in here, wanting action, simple. Yeah. And that's basically about the truth of it, yeah. But uh, have you watched stories from in the army, or have you watched stories about. Well, well, well just uh, how you got in the army because you were actually born in England, man. You people don't know this. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mate. <laughs> no, no, because me it's father. A Dad was in the army as well. It's a very interesting point. My father was in the Policy Regiment, right? So they were posted over in Aden, uh, Radfarn and that. There was a insurgency going over there at the time. He had done a deal, apparently, with his commanding officer saying that I want back to Dundee for my wife being pregnant. Right. To live with a child. Because my other brothers and sisters had been born in Dundee. Right. Because he was in a war zone, that's when CO said, no, right. you're staying here. He then got bust over there, allegedly. He was a sergeant and he dropped some knee and got bust a corporal and whatever, but he still did his tour. At that time, I was born in Aldershot in a place called Margaret Lee Hospital. As you know now, guys, Aldershot is gone. Yeah. That was called the home of the British Army. And that's where the British Policy Regiment had their base. Gymnasium, all the rest there, and all went through there, and they went on to the Brecon Beacons with the SAS train on Penny Fan, and we done all that carry ons. Hence the reason 85% of the, the SAS was made because the paras had done all the training on Sandy yeah. Bridge yeah. and on Penny Fan. So, because it was born on all the so obviously it was took right back to Dundee, yeah. Right. Somebody made a comment on they said he's not even a Scotsman, he's an Englishman. That's wrong because I'll yeah. tell you yeah. why. You're given doom last night. I mean, if you were born a Chinaman, you wouldn't be a Chinaman. No. Yeah. I was born a Pakistani, I wouldn't be a Pakistani. I would be Pakistani during last night. Yeah. Meaning you could take your father's nationality. Yeah. My father's yeah. nationality is Scottish. Yeah. I'm Scottish. Yeah. So that's it. So what kind of was the best bit of action you ever had? What, what was it like? And was, was the best, but no, what was the best 
action you ever got into where you, you had to jump out of an helicopter and get there? Oh, at a very early age, I was jumping out of planes, and um, in my day, they've stopped this now as well. You've done seven jumps, yeah, eight in total. On uh, one of the jumps, had to be a night jump on the seventh, and on the night jump was uh, I was quite horrendous because everything was done on black in, in the aircraft. Everything went on green, black, got to the drop zone, and you came out in the dark. Right. And the way a night jump works, guys, is when you're coming down on your parachutes and you're dropping like that, yeah, you'll see little dots and red lights and you'll see traffic and whatever and that if you're heading on a drop zone. But as soon as you get to something like two or three hundred feet, it goes pitch black. Yeah. And all you you hit the deck within seconds. It's right. called ground rush. Right. You don't, don't even see it coming. So if you're trying to go for a side left or a side there, you're like, I forget about it. You just cream and right and just bounce up and off your lucky stars. When I was talking to somebody in, in the house, it's like jumping off a, a roof, like a house roof, landing. Still really hard to land when you hit that deck. Very, very hard to land. Yeah, that's, yeah. Kind of, that's kind of pressure you yeah, get. the pressure you yeah, But so. then we also the jump as well to get the qualify for our wings was it called a balloon jump, a barrage jump. Right. You know them big white barrage jumps yeah, yeah, during yeah, the war? Yeah, barrage balloons, yeah. They would take us out uh, uh, Western on Green or wherever we were jumping there and they would raise that balloon up and there'd be four in a cage and just a metal bar and they'd say, right, number one, go forward, you step, they'd take the thin bar away and he'd go, go, you jump. It's not like coming to an aeroplane and a strip steam and wind and all the rest of that, mate. You just drop 800 feet. But on about two or three on the feet when the shoot opens, the apex die opens it's boom, through your mouth. Right. Still something yeah. in your mouth. Yeah. And then the shoot opens it and then you start drifting away from the cord that's holding that and you're going away and going away because you want to steer away. Do you get a rush off it? Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. So every you, jump at one parachute set to me. Better than sex. From the first jump to the last, you still get the same rush. Better than sex. Mad, mad rush. Any it went wrong? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us? Yes. Um, Two, two very bad jump shots. One when I snapped my Achilles tendons. That's a bad, uh, that's a bad thing. A joke. And, yeah, and that, and that was very it. lucky because I nearly went into water that night. I nearly went into a canal and I just uh, crumpled up in a ball and accepted that it was, it was going to be a hard one. Because I hit the side of the water, uh, canal. Right. Came in and I snapped two, my two tendons. Right. One was all right, like bruised bad. But the other one was snapped, so I was putting a sticky like in. A sticky is a pot for anyone in England. Yeah, put it in a. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, put it in a pain for what, three months or so. But I'll tell you a true story on a, on a jump I've done on a brigade jump, which is a big, serious jump. I mean, there's a lot of aeroplanes, the most in the United Kingdom at that time, in the air. It's called a brigade jump. Right. So you've got one battalion, two battalion, and the three battalions of the Parachute Regiment up there. Right. You've got the seven Royal Horse Artillery who back us up. You've got nine squadron who back us up. So you've got all the guys, the logistics, what need, we need. Uh, seven out of ten, seven Royal Horse Artillery to back us up yeah. to go on our battle zone, yeah? Yeah. And you get an MSP, medium stress platforms. They go out with the Land Rovers and the heavy gear, and then we come out. And Anyway, it was a brigade job. Afterwards, it was worked out that me being so skinny and light with my shoot and my, my gear and all the rest of the gear, I'd probably be wearing about 10 and a half stone at the time, right? Right. With my equipment on, say 40, right? 15. I was number four, but the guy number on starboard, he was something like number 11 or 12, right? So when you start going, Go, 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 go. He finally loses con and gets through the way and it's go, go, go. And it just goes, you know, and they just lose control. Right. Now, I remember coming under the aeroplane and I just come under the aeroplane. I got a kick in the face, yeah. So, bang, this boot hit us in the face and I went into this cold spins, right? But it's uh, very, very nasty. It's called plus. Right. Because what happens is, say, away, you panic, you look left to right. Whether the guys under the and all wasn't really interested, you never meant to drop the container or go through the guy's parachute. But I hit mine instantly, got rid of the weight. Because if you land and that's on your legs, your legs are snapping straight away. Right. I'll kill you. So 
We got rid of my, my, my container, which has got my weapon attached to it, my, my GVMG, my rounds, my rations, my screen, my, everything for the XA, so I got rid of it. I'm now trying to get out of these twists. Now, what happened is because he's kicked his and he's put his in the wrong direction, the twists are right up to the back of my neck. To the, right. So the parachute's not got enough air to open. And this is what people didn't realise. When you come out and get in the air, look at the parachute, so you got what? So you've got a drill. If he's coming too close to you, he'll shout, steer away. You'll go on the opposite side. Right. And you'll steer away from him. And he'll do the same, and you'll drift into your own airspace. Yeah, right, right. And then you'll just land. But because you've not got that, you get a thing called an air steel. Right. So if he comes under you and he drops, he comes under you, Bump, you just throw the last for about 60 feet, right down there, 60 feet in the deck, and then the last guy will get the unluckiness and he'll come in for about 60 feet. Was that with the tangle, the parachutes yeah. together, yeah? You know, same them with the big Nasty, nasty, yeah. right? So because I've got these twists, I go into my drills and start, you, you learn to try and kick the opposite way to kick out. Right. And I'm kicking and I'm looking at the deck, I'm kicking, 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 look, and I see the deck getting closer. And I've got a couple of them out, I feel it's Trying to open, so I'm getting some air into the suit now. So I've got probably half a parachute above my head rather than full. Right. Everybody's looking for these air scenes, but while well, that guy's in trouble. Because they know, they know it. it's a bad, bad, bad twist. And I look down and I see the ground coming as they go, oh, fuck this, I just pull and I just accept that. And I bounce for about 20 feet, bounce, bounce, bounce. And I had one of them and I got away with it, murder. I had a big bruise on my face with the guy's foot and kicked yeah. his. And my two would come onto the aircraft at the same time. Yeah. So it's like you being on the opposite side, a big lad like you, right? We are your gear. And because they've lost control on the starboard side, he's come under. This young guy was jumped seven or eight people ahead of him. He's come out and he's caught up with him. And this is basically what happens under the yeah. airplane. I've, I've heard a few lads, I've talked to quite a few of the troop things. Uh, really? they've, they've jumped from 30 odd thousand feet, they've landed perfect and they've walked 10 feet and broke their ankle in a pothole or something. <laughs> it's one of them things, isn't it? The smoke, mate, isn't it? Yeah. Mate, the very first casualty on the Falklands campaign in 1982 was a paratrooper. And he was cross decking from ship to ship. And he got right. caught in the swell and he broke his leg. Right. And then he get put back on the... That was the best he casualty. He didn't even get on. Yeah. Come back to war, you know. <laughs> Poor guy, yeah. so yeah. He must have, well, then again, he might have been the first guy killed on there. So there you go. Inshallah, God's will. What was the toughest mission you went on? Definitely, as I was saying about ISIS, I don't know what speaking of. Yeah. Like, in the palace and that, you always knew that you had a call sign ugly, you could call in tornadoes, you could call in 8-10 bomber strikes and everything, you know? I mean, there's the mercenary, mate. You can't call a nobody here on your own. You're on your own big thing, you know? Right. And, uh, as I say, if you're out there with an eight man team and they get you, you're not a fucking trouble, mate. You're, yeah. Who are you going to call to help you out? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 That's all sad was shouting at me, but I'm glad he's shouting at me now because I'm going to get lived through this because well he's done, me the skills. Well done, the training yeah. kicks in because yeah. I've actually got that footage where you hear me saying to some guy, some comment like, I'm not giving a fuck, mate, I'm going down fighting. Because I had interpreted the speech during the night, I intercepted, sorry, and they were speaking in French and I basically understood the majority of what they were saying. And basically, San Kino at five o'clock, we'll get that. Right. They were bringing the big guns up. That's the time I thought I was telling you the story yeah, yeah. I was being yeah. stronger for three days. Yeah. Well, that's a food to me. I've got an RPG with six rocket heads in front of us. I've got a machine gun sitting here. I've got a, a German G3 here. I've got a Gok here. I've got grenades there. And you hear me saying, like, I'm going to fuck. I'm going down fighting. Because well, it's one of them last one for yourself, isn't it? Bang, it, it's happened. I think that, that was the attitude of most of the, the, the troop, one of our troopers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you've got to go down, down fight, and you're not going to give up. I'll tell you a true story. Yeah. My father is uh, in a place called uh, Abu Naji up in uh, north, uh, northern Iraq. And if you go to a place called Route 6, it's very, very tribal. Right. And you got to understand how it works over there. It's like, not just Shia and Sunni and Kurds. It goes up a lot of types, like the gangs, Lockheed Fleet, 
holding on his front of his arms, with his arms, beachy driver, beachy mob, walkie, walkie fleet. <sighs> Numerous. It goes on and on, right? So that's what their local tribes are like. Right. The Hawaii tribes fighting the Hawaii for a tribe one night. Like, you'll get up and you'll see the streets are fire and over. I mean, it's a big contact and go big guy. Somebody uh, had a Hawaii tribe fighting the Hawaii tribe. Somebody's bad mouth one of their daughters said during the day called her a donkey or something. Right? And now they're on the, on the mad pitch blasting each other. And it goes on until, the, until they've restored pride in each other. And the next day they're all shaking hands on the donkeys and all right, guys. Oh. That's a true story, mate. And then he says, she is a donkey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So any, um, any, did he ever get wounded, injured in anything? What was the worst injury you got? Well, I know this, but I'm letting the people know. Who, I know, who, obviously, yeah. I was blown up there at St. Bomb, yeah. yeah. And there's a close, close, a few close calls with uh, shots coming in that, that close it. I've been next to people where they've been shot point blank right face and I've seen their heads explode and everything. And it's been brutal. Yeah. Brutal, horrific, yeah. But uh, on that time when I told you about the, the bomb and when the bomb went off, like, uh, what was it? Was it? Was it a, was it a mine? No, they put nine. They dug oh, in nine. nine one five five military artillery shells. They dug them in. What are them to we know? Well, they just go in big artillery, and they right, miles, right. right? So, so they it's put a big the shell. So right. they captured nine of these ordnance, rigged them up with whatever. I see. Debt. Put a command wire to that and just really you go and pass and then click and boom and you shouldn't so be it's like, a, it's like a booby trap, isn't it, for you? When massive booby yeah. trap, massive IED, yeah. yeah. And uh, what I'd like to tell you a story was once you finish this one, don't let's forget about a guy from Newcastle, a very good friend of mine, Robert Swanee. Uh, Swan, ex one part of lad who went through battalion with me, we done our American jumps together, got our American wings in America. And uh, he was a hero of mine. And me and him were on the same team. He was killed over in the Iraq, uh, Iraq sniper team. Right. And the reckon the father and son come in from Chesney. Right. And he was shot through the neck. One, one shot killed instantly, right? And Robert Swan's family from Newcastle. So I'm going to have friend you by telling the story because he's a good friend of mine and God rest him. Um, right. And I'm so. saying this with a lot of pride. And the guys in the my part of one part of, well, respect what I'm trying to say here about uh, Swanee. God rest them. Well, you can't, you can't give any more than your life, can you? That's the, the ultimate sacrifice, isn't it? So people don't give and enough to And he was like Michelle, all the photos yeah. were like Michelle. <coughs> Half decent lad, always playing football with kids, always trying to help them, get them trains and swings and all that. And yeah. This is night, but I had to get him that day. I know the guys that one of the like the ones that wouldn't give the kids a sweetie and all that. No, they've got to pick the guy with stops and goes in and plays with him with the ball and all that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as I say, when I mean, that ball went off, um, I used to always see Michelle. What was it like actually when it went off? Because people oh, say you can't hear. It was that wide awake, right? wide awake. Could wide you hear properly? I remember not? fucking everything. Could you? Yeah, yeah. Me, as, me as well. I had blood coming out of my eyes, I had blood coming out of when I woke up on, on, the, on the hard stuff. But, but I remember them being. Mm. I even remember screaming from my mum at the top of my voice inside. Right. Right. And I'd love to speak to the guys in that vehicle the day and say, Do you remember me screaming, Mum? This is ever the exception. I was going to meet her. Right. Right, I'm, I'm on oh, a day two or three. You finished. I just, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. I, I just accepted I was on my way to come, come past, but I, I was there. Yeah. So when I woke up on the plot, so the first thing I wanted was my rifle to protect us, and I couldn't find it. So I was attached to it, and I'm going, oh, man, four, I couldn't find him. I rolled back on my back, to get my best at all. Oh, Holy shit, this is damn good now, you know, you big box, you know, that makes sense, that's broke. Yeah, yeah, you left over. I'm telling you, that's all. Uh, nothing's happening. Now. Look at this. This is just snapped in half. This is the way up there. This is called a compound fracture. That was snapped in half. Yeah. yeah. But it still doesn't work to this day. Look, it's not. I nah, didn't the close. Yeah. So, cut a long story. I'm, I'm lying there. I mean, saying to my, my brother, boy, when he said, goes, he goes, ah, you've never heard a bad doing before, have you? And I go, no, no, I'm not. I'm not doing second prize. I don't even know what second prize is. I thought we'll talk about that. And like, ah, well, you know, about when you take a real doing. And I used to always say to myself, can I take a real doing? Well, I wonder what a real doing is, because I've seen boy with all the yeah. bad ones with a head like twice the size years. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a mountain being battered be a baseball bat, broken yeah. jar, broken short yeah. bats. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. Isn't it? it was even worse what happened to the four of them guys. That's a fact. None of you knows what happened to them. Yeah. 
one of them died in the car crash. Somebody cut his brakes apart, allegedly. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm lying there, I'm saying to myself, pain. This was real pain. You felt it come from the soles of your feet, right up to the top, right through your body, right through your body. Oof, the pain was amazing. Because the Americans had tried to drop and come in and remove it, you know, one thing, because it could be a secondary device. Right. Team leader went to Gibbles, went out, Alan, big shout out to Gibble. You guys know who you are, Elvis Presley, Elvis. The medic there, when I dragged the medics and told you to help Alex because he had a broken back, you know who he is. You guys. You still Kevin, have in contact with these guys? I know them all, yeah, and yeah. they're still on the circuit. I don't want to go into names yeah, too yeah, much because yeah, a lot yeah. of them are still working on the right, circuit. Yeah. But guys, you know who you are, right in respect for Bob Mark, love you. And, um, so them guys saved your life that day then, yeah. And, and I always remember yeah. lying there, pain, pain, can I take pain? And Alan's made the decision, fuck me, on top because he's dying. He's fucking dying, man. Get him in. He's just picked us up and threw us on the, the top of the bike and dragged us on. The pain was phenomenal. Yeah. Because, you know, man, we remind me of broken back. I yeah. put a splint on him straight away or he could paralyze him for life. And they didn't know their back's been snapped at this point. They don't know that spinal cord has severely yeah. been, mine's hidden, mine had been nipped. Yeah. And so, you know, I was able to walk for, walk for two weeks or something, but yeah. I'd only been nipped until I settled yeah. down. And then they find out the spinal cord inside the spinal cord that runs right through it is actually okay. Yeah. So that's what, how it works. Yeah. So, um, the, your back was broke still, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, because uh, what happened when I'd, I'd head of the windscreen and that's a uh, bulletproof vehicle. I was, yeah, I killed my helmet on and I hit it. And that's when. That would smash your so back. So that's uh, shattered on the disc at the bottom, yeah. 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 I lost a bit of an inch off my height and a lot of problem now with it. Yeah. You know, to this day, I still am paying me. But, um, the pain, yeah, I remember, I remember it clear as hell every day because we got put on a chop and took them to a place called Camp and I found them and got operated on. Right. Operated on my hands. And then I got woke up for another guy, he took the chop, he gave us his card, asked for permission to put us on there again and he reckoned he can do a better job. Right. That happened again. And, uh, as I say, the pain comes through you like, like. How long, long was it before you went you were back to normal? Well, not normal, but when, when you went home? Well, when they brought us home, they flew us back in a private jet. Right. So it was right in the airport in Edinburgh. I don't know how they got the clearance. I bet you were over the mountain that Edinburgh on the Dingley. Yeah. Even though where I was, mate. I woke up in the table and struck <laughs> right in my box. I still had the drip in my neck. I got a big scar in my neck with the drip in it. Yeah. Right. I was scared of that. You know, that in case happened. Yeah, right. And uh, I always remember the guy saying this from two Canadians, he says, I'm going to give you a hat. This will be your last one. Because it was a big bag of US meds. We said, I don't know what oxycodone was. You know, yeah, like yeah. My name's at the time. Big yeah. bag of oh, I ended up going to him. And uh, I was lying there. Uh, put us in a taxi. And he told the guy he was not allowed to go past 30 miles on. And I woke up on, you know, Tay Bridge coming into Dundee and seen the lights. And I'm in the middle of Ramadan, and the driver's a Pakistani, and he's fighting with his wife about food because he's hungry. Right. And I'm lying there going, I've been captured. <laughs> Again. I've been captured. <laughs> <He's> captured. <laughs> Start crying in the back of the car, and the guy's like, yeah, it's okay, sir, you're in Dundee. <laughs> oh, mate, my wife never even knew I was coming over with son. I got back at five back in, in the morning. Got him back in Baghdad. <laughs> yeah. I always remember lying in the car saying to my wife, please just give me a tip, please give me a tip. Committed. Yeah, big grey beard in a wee man. That was mental. But um, so can we go to the bit where you get out the paras, and then you decide all these girls have been kidnapped and by the ISIS. Yeah. And you decide to go back in. You paid for your own weapons. I do twenty three thousand. Yeah, I got back better after the the, yes. the broken back and you know, I got myself back. To, uh, but you you went in there without getting paid, and you went in to help these it people. Made my mind nothing. up. I was going back to help them because I'd seen her uh, just, horrific videos on on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, and um, they went on to a place called Monk Shingle. Now what it is, guys, is the oldest religion in the world is a religion called. The Yazidi. Right. And they are on the top of Mount Singal. And ISIS outlawed them, to call them devil worshippers because they the, the, the worship the devil. That's what they said. But they weren't just law, abiding peace with their own people on the Mount Singal, their own families and that. So when ISIS come from Syria and right through that, 
Well, the day right into Mosul we took 400 million at the bank and captured all the American equipment and the money. And they all obviously hit shingle on the way in. Right. I executed all the men and took every young female to capture 2,000 prisoners. Yeah. Took them right into Mosul where they had them for three or four years and they were doing them, selling them as sex, sex slaves. Terrible. And things were happening to them girls. And the brave guys who went in to rescue them, wow, you could tell you stories and some of them were the amazing guys. They actually. So did, them, did but, you, you, you actually saved some of them and took them to Turkey, didn't you? Was it Turkey? Some, some of them, yeah, some of them. That's where we got them into Turkey and they helped some of them and, that and all the rest. That. You were only, obviously, you were all only able to do so much. Yeah. And because uh, you were self funded and you were paying your own way and that, you were paying yeah. your own. Okay, they fed you. It was crazy because we were used to mortary tactics and that, right? And these guys would just rock right up in the middle of a battle with a P1400, like pick up, you know, yeah, the little, yeah. little pick ups. Yeah. And the guy would jump off the back of your curry and he'd just get the dish and he start feeding you and boys would start queuing up. The boat's going everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And the hunger's more, um, more than deep. Um, getting um, shot. <laughs> cross, cross I had that earlier on. <laughs> We're we'll scrap, we're we'll scrap, he's yeah, survived. Yeah, he's gone. Mike's got, yeah. Mike, Mike's got for part two over there. <laughs> yeah, I had that the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. So guys, it's a pleasure being down Newcastle tonight night and I feel like me with Mike, bro. Stockton, Stockton, we're at now. I stopped that, I'm not yeah, heading up to Newcastle, yeah, sorry. Stockton on right, tease, yeah. Yeah, so Gary, so what, did you, did you, when did you stop being in the army? When did you pack it all in? What did well, you? Well, obviously after that, when I seen that special branch had pulled his back coming in because he'd been over there a few times doing you know, a few missions or a few jobs. And that about they knew exactly what was going down. Yeah. Pictures again, pictures. Well, again. just be classes illegal then, what you were doing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Everywhere I said there was other a certain Is it like James Bond if you get caught? We'll, we'll deny you. We'll deny totally, you. Totally deniable. Totally yeah, deniable. Yeah. yeah. No. You've got, you've got in there, risk you've your got own life. Understand. You'll get caught for them. For any of you guys planning on going over there, because there's still a lot going on, there's yeah. still a lot of guys going, there was people got killed in 218, 219, 220, and they're still being killed by airstrikes from Turkey. Turks hate the Kurds. The Kurds are the biggest displaced nation in the world. Fact. You've got 5 million them in Rojava, you've got maybe 8 million in northern Iraq, you've got maybe another 6 million in northern Iran, put them all together, and what we got? A massive country. But they will not give them an army and they will not give them their own country. They've got their own also land the leader in prison for 30 years. Fuck. And that's where he is. Because they've been deemed as a, a unit called the PKK, which is outlawed. That's it. You see, me and you were a member of IRA. Yeah, right. And then you get the YPG, the YPG. They call them the YPG. It's politics, is it? Yes, yeah. a lot. I had to say I'd been down south with the free UK, which was allowed because they'd helped the Brits. So there's a lot of got a lot. Unless you know what you're doing. You now, do. I went to Turkey on holiday now, and they got my passport, and they found out I'd been in Kurdistan. I'd been arrested. Right, right. And there's white guys still over there in prison as I speak. Freedom. The guy went on holiday with his wife. He's come back now to go and tell his mother that he's never been seen since, and that's in the last three years. Because they found on his passport, it's been on his Facebook, and they found photographs, like we've all got photos on there with you. EPG and holding trophies and all the rest of them. So these are facts for you to take on board if you're going to be going abroad, guys. Don't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, mate? Yeah. And don't forget, the guys, to push the like buttons down below. We're going to get War Hero, Real Life Rambo. So can you tell us any more stories, Gary? Because people are loving it. Obviously, they're ah, all sitting on here listening to you. The story's all day long, mate. Well, come yeah. on, then. Let's get them out. Right, let's think about a couple of clients. Yes. The day I nearly killed myself. Tell you what. Go on, then. <laughs> I think, um... This, this is a legendary story, this one. Um, yeah. Um, we're up Sandy Bridge at the time, right? And uh, you get junior breaking and senior breaking. What's means, this? Is this an army base? In the mountains, right? Yeah? And yeah. the mountains, when you're going for a, like a Lance Corp or Corp, or they, they, the parachute regiment invented it up in uh, Sandy Bridge. Uh, oh, the battle, not up in Brecon Beacons, right? And it was a battle school. And it was to a very, very high standard. So anybody caught or, or sergeant in the port, and any, any multi, they had to, they had to go through it. Right. But of a parachute regiment soldier went up there, he was deemed to go back to battalion with a distinction. Right. Which meant the best of the best of the best. 
or he'd be looked down on. And people in the room want to know. Is it true, Gary? Just to, is it true that more the the paras you in, more of them are SES? That's what I said yeah, earlier yeah, on. Eighty-five yeah, yeah. percent of them made the SES. Yeah, yeah. Mummy, she used to always see me when you went down, still in the lines, all you seen, and every second window was a red berry. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're all regiment, all regiment, yeah. all uh, Just let you know, wait, it's us. Yeah. Uh, well, it was one part, or two part, yeah. three part, three yeah. part, or two part, or one part, and then you see the odd Royal Marine one, or you see the odd Remy one, and that. Yeah. I'm not knocking anybody for it because they've oh, done no. it, and I never saw best to get, it, to get in there, it's unbelievable. You've got to be. Oh, yeah, they're a fabulous film, yeah. And uh, on, oh, back to the story, yeah. guys, pressing the rain, right? And I always remember, like, you remember when you were the cadets and you went yeah. in the tin roofs here. Yeah, oh yeah. The old hairy blankets and oh, you're lying there, right? <laughs> and you've got to make your bed what before you go. That's the one. Zero five in the morning, you hear it belting down, you're like, oh, well, there's no point in crying about it because if it ain't raining, it ain't fucking training. Yeah. And that was one of the, one of the legendary motors of Paris at the time. And um, what goes up, so I got designated on the live attack. Everything was done live. Everything. Right. My platoon had all come back from the Falklands, 1982, you know, or tete or tete, right, in French, mixed up in head, right? And uh, obviously they'd been at war for real. Yeah. Like Skelsey had been shot in the back, knocked all his teeth at me, a GPMG. A uh, guy, uh, even the commanding officer, had a multi cross for a distinction on his screen. And Sergeant Ross was the only platoon sergeant from B Company when that monk long didn't survive. Fuck. Yeah. Right, Sergeant John Ross would take me through the devil. Lovely man, number respect to him and my protein staff. But anyway, we're up there and we're there, just pushing down, and now we've got all these top officers on the hill, and we've all got the knots out, and they're crumping tea party and all that. And they're all watching <laughs> us going through these live attacks, and all I hear is, fix bayonets, and I'm like, line behind there. Shh, bang, bang, and it's SOR, and then they saw it fixes the bayonet. Well, I've already got my parasmoke done like that, and I've took the young guys, because I'm classed as a senior Tom now, I've done a couple of years, so I'm like, oh, probably six grenades doing that, right? So, the grenade man will go up to the top of the barrel, and he'll dispatch a few grenades, and once they go, boom, it's an automatic sign for the rest, he used to follow up and over and into the targets. So I was like, oh, I'll get shot with this person, mate. And they always wore, wore an orange vest. Right. Because they're DC, they're, they're director of stuff. Yes. They're there to keep the right to say, stop! If somebody's in an accident, stop, unload, take the weapon off them, or right. whatever, right? right? Or if a stray bullet's hit somebody like that, stop, medics are needed, yeah. Right. So I was the up, right? Brilliant. There's one tree, and you couldn't write this if you wanted to, mate, right? <laughs> it's like that, and it's got one branch sticking out like that. Right? Yeah. You couldn't write this if you wanted to, mate. So the bull boy goes, whoosh, first grenade goes, great, crump, crump, second, crump, third one, whoosh, throws it forward. What happens? It and fucking hits the branch, <laughs> bounces right fucking back over my head. I, I always remember seeing it going, fuck that. And so I die for, and the poor guy with the orange vest on the sergeant, he's the director of staff. He's, <laughs> he's looked and all his memory and going, fuck this, I'm out of here. So he dives right, right through the mud. He's coming from there to steal, right? So, he yeah. just, so I, I just got up and carried on. That's the one. Everybody followed us. So the attack was a blinding, right. blinding success. He knew, he knew what happened. Come on, guys, this son's a hero. Push the leg button down below. Thumbs I knew. up, get the thumbs up. And I knew. I, yeah. was, I knew I was getting a good doing when I got back, right? I knew it. Oh, did you get told off then? Well, wait a minute, right. it gets better. It gets better. We're all, we're all down there, right? We're so, we're like a little rodents, we're like that. The rain's around in my back and everything, right? We weren't even looking to wear waterproofs, beat that one. Yeah. No, you weren't a way for No, but then it's 82, 83. Oof. Anyway. The springy deer comes down and he says, oh, I'm, 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 who was the man with the grenades? <laughs> 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 and I shouts out, shut! Right, bangs the tongue and he goes, oh, very well done, young man. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Well done. And I'm thinking, fucking brilliant. That's me, <laughs> just got off with that, eh? <laughs> Turns my back, oh, I oh, felt fucking slap right in the back of the lug. He went, that's fast. You wait till I get you back. Is that the sergeant? He like, oh, mate, he's covered in mud through his eyes right down, mate. Like, he's not happy because he did get his bucket. But, yeah, that was a story enough. 
So there you go. Here Come on, you guys, push the like buttons. We, these stories are brilliant, Gary. They're brilliant. People are saying brilliant. Gary's from Dundee. Just use people. He's not from uh, Court Bridge near me. He's further up. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared to go to Court Bridge, mate. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get yeah. taxed on the even, 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 even Mother Care's got Dorman on in Court Bridge. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and the people better offices. Stories, Greg. Yeah, most, eh? People want more stories. I know, yeah. So we'll get taxed if we go through there, mate. We're going to be able to yeah. off the car, yeah. So now watch this. This is a true story, right? We're in Norway, right? And uh, we used to do three month tours at the time on a thing called the Somebody AM. Somebody says there, Gary, where are you in Army Key Commander? Does that make sense to you? Um, where are you in the Army Key Commander? Yeah, man, that's what we two absolute legends. Right. From yeah, Scotland. Yeah. Brilliant, guys. Right. So, We're from Scotland, yeah. Uh, what was it? Key person? Commander, something to say. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah get Mike the story. Yeah, yeah, Come Commander, tank, to Commander G Tank. Push the yeah. thumbs up. Come on. Right, so, lights. anyway, back to that one, Arm. Um, yeah. We're in Norway and um, we're parachuted in and we're parachuted in a frozen lake. Yeah. Everything went fine. You're right. Would you be in white gear now? Yeah, yeah. Snow with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we put our bundles out with our skis and all the rest. Yeah, yeah. I skied as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> James Bond, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Everything, <laughs> was, didn't, didn't, everything didn't, didn't, was white, nearly as white as my teeth in them days. <laughs> right? So, uh, and... Uh, Come on, Bond. What happened to Commander Bond, didn't he? <laughs> after, after, yeah. allegedly, if it dropped to minus 30, he had to stop playing soldiers. Right. Started digging holes and went into... Fox holes are called down there, yeah. Went into a real serious survival mode, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the game of soldiers, because people yeah. went through yeah, 25 yeah. and that lost noses and lost yeah. toes and everything. So, well, we come with a bright idea, we left for Bergens and took one sleeping bag between every four of them. Right. Should never have happened. We were promised that the choppers would drop them off up at the uh, valley, like fucking 12 miles away, which we would have had to tab that night and we tabbed all night. Like, everybody was going down like flies, right? Was this just the uh, manoeuvres you were on then? Yeah. yeah, and I was one of the hardest tabs in my fucking life, right? I was. Was it? And I was, I was struggling to keep up. Like, I was, I was, I was, not it. Yeah. I was there, I was there at the end of it, but I was there. How, how old were you when you retired? Oh, well, back at that day, we were 21, 22. Right. But I was fit and all that, and yeah. I was doing biathlons and triathlons and everything, but I'll tell you, I was struggling, mate. Right? Yeah. Because the weight, the weight was tremendous. We were, we were always carrying extra Cold, rounds yeah. and mortar yeah. rounds and all sorts of rounds. And anyway, this is a classic. So, beat. Spoke to you last night, I don't mention your second name, but uh, you done well when you went on to have an exceedingly career in the Special Forces with all your blank, and we're well, not going to mention your second name, but you were platoon sergeant at the time, and uh, that was your favourite. And my nickname at that time in the Paris, what was it? Wasn't it Taz? Taz, three years then, yeah, like the Taz, Taz to me, the devil. <laughs> I watched that in the Paris, it wasn't it? Oh, was it? You know what it was? No. A razors. Razors? Why, what was that, that above? Well, that come back and better than that's when I got three years for cutting a guy being up and razor. Right. But I'll tell you, that was all for one video of the hood. And then the hotel was staying in, I played it every night. And remember the gangster movie, Long Good Friday? Yeah, yeah. Long Good Friday. Cut them razors. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins, Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. cut them razors, yeah. Pierce Brunson. So at that right. time, I used to do these three throwing knives and I was always throwing them in the door, right? Doom, doom. Somebody went. He goes, she asked me fucking blades out on the me. <laughs> so somebody went, cut them razors. And ever <laughs> since that, it's stuck right, and I fucking hate it. Right? You cut them razors. I hated it. I thought it was something to do with Freddy Krueger. Yeah, <laughs> cut them razors. <laughs> oh, so, with scissor fingers. <laughs> well, sadly, sadly I, I confessed the bit in the arse when I got three years for it. Yeah. Years later. Anyway. Yeah. And um, we're on the sex exercise, fucking men. So he says, right, guys, guys are going down. For C Company on the radio, they've had five cars of that. A Company's come on, four cars of that. He goes, B Company, none, but we're going down. I was getting an hour, I'll hate. I said, yes, you want to be fucking 20 with cars of that, because I'm on my way down. He goes, right, so we're not allowed to go into civilian yeah. properties. Right. So he says, right, kick up my door, guys. I goes, right, he's down, man. Skis up there. Boom. And we go. So we're getting, get a little. Hexy stool up for the heat, though. Yeah. So we ate all around there like that. Oh, I'm all fighting. I try to get to the second joint. Right? We get the one dodge bag out of I've developed a routine that you can get 15 minutes in the sleeping bag, but you've got to be out. And I said, Well, fuck that. I'm not we just getting two in at the same time for the body heat. Yeah, together's more heat, right? isn't it? Yeah. And making it, say, 20 minutes. Yeah. 
But there's that one look at us, we'll just throw the smoke over it and then I'll smoke, we'll get the smokes off, so we're getting warm. Brilliant idea, guys. So we're getting, we do this, so we're getting half an hour, I think. Anyway. You like your sleep. <laughs> anyway, I'm six platoon, right? Yeah. So five platoon had done the same, they kicked the door in, and four platoon kicked the door in. So this old farmer gets up in the morning, Brian, he comes through a lot, he's got his little hat on, he's feathering, and he goes in. And there's these paratroopers all lying there, right? Well, what have the phone doing tonight? Fucking German helmets. Right. So, well, they're lying asleep with me, the German helmets on, right? No guys like that. Ah! Oh! <laughs> so he legs it down, he's path me and legs it in his next barn, and there's five between sleep, and they're fucking these American helmets, GI helmets. So he's fucking flipped, he's like, he's running around here like he's seen ghosts. Yeah, from the past. Yeah. Well, he's not expecting this during the night. They're yeah. soldiers loud, me fucking jamming out. They've got to come back from the 40s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a true story, mate. So he, he got paid money, he got caught paid comments. He's in the ring for us kicking his head and all that, but I was explained it was severe during the night and people were dying in that moment. They'd say they were dying in that. And that was an after true story, mate, yeah. A bit gnarly. Wow, mental. And in them days, you got to remember, <coughs> when we were in Norway, it was expensive. Right. So you could not off your hands. Because I'd, a great thing, if they would have saw me and you mind them their own mind that a barn, like they'd come up with an attempt to a fight. Right. But in Norwegian, oh, yeah. in Norwegian, wouldn't they hit you? No. Well, you wouldn't have hit you. Right? He'd slap you. Right. That was a real deal with me. Right? right, yeah. And the minute you hit him, he was soon caught for a lot of money. Right. So we were all warned and we're all... Like getting... the old jewels, wasn't it? When you used to hit them in the face with the gloves and... Well, it's about like, like, about like a certain podcaster, is it? You know what I mean? You yeah. put an allegation in his way and you get fucking shredded for being a whatever. But anyway... Yeah. So congratulations Gary, to your time coming soon, son. Yeah. So, Gary, um, I'm going to ask you a question what people will probably never ask you. What about the missus? What was it like for her having to wait for you going to these missions? And I mean, how bad was it for her? It must have been... Obviously, never ask that question, obviously yeah. horrendous, and nobody ever asked yeah. that question. But uh, yeah. I used to clean prison life. Yeah. I used to, because you know, you've got a good woman who was bringing up your mother, yeah. uh, a mother of your son, and you know, to sleep worrying about who's at your house and that, you know, you know, you sleep yeah. that way and that, but, you yeah. know, you go to bed with an easy conscience. Yeah. And it's later in the mile when you sleep with an easy conscience, eh? Yeah. So until you walk in that life, and then, then you know where I'm coming from. Course, yeah. Right, you understand exactly what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to say is, if you've got a good room back home and that, I would phone once a week. Right. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes my conversation will last five minutes and everything. Right. And yeah, I'd have young guys come and get a bottle of sat phone. i say, you will in there, yeah, but that messenger's down and this and WhatsApp and mobiles and this and Probably talk to the missus more than they would at home. No, talk to birds of metal and ring, you mean. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to fucking with 30 odd year here, you can't. <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. Facts. Facts. And uh, you've got to remember now, I'll give you a story as well. You're going to love this one. Don't forget Bag to push the like button, guys. Baghdad, guys, this is a true story when a uh, dad slept through a, a drive by shooting. Yeah, slept through it. <laughs> I, can, I can vouch for that. <laughs> and, and, I can he likes, vouch his, for he that. likes his sleep, believe me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, Brian, we goes upstairs and we get to the other weapons lady and I'm now pushing them and he's putting the door, bed behind the door because when he come, comes up my upstairs and goes, it's going right through the door, eh? Yeah. So I'm being clever, I'm out of the door behind there is going there. Yeah. Gets the old unit, puts it there. They ain't coming to my door, they're hitting the unit. Pulls the doors open, puts two two grenades, a couple of pistols, and then I've got an AK there, and I've got a weapon like the side of my bed, a revolver, right? So, cut a long story short, comes down in the morning for breakfast. No good smoking eyes. I got look. I'm going, and somebody died to myself, no? Yeah. So, I'm sitting there out with a ball, because it's about six in the morning, I'm like, Nobody talking like, finally, somebody gets some balls ago. Where were you last night? I was, where did you eat? Exactly. I was, you know, something you got something, have you got something to say, just say it? Yeah, we were all on the fucking rooftop fighting insurgents, right? And I'm like, what? So I was at the front door, there's all the fucking bulls. <laughs> I'm going to drive by shooting on the fucking bulls, mate, and I'd be sleeping in the back bedroom. <laughs> 
<laughs> All the way through it, mate. I like the pig and whistle. Well, I think he's knowing coming into there, and he's a kind of a kid. He went to the bed, he was about two and a half hours with me and uh, Mike. We're trying to get him up. We, I went down to eat all day. <laughs> so we had to go and get an Indian with Gary paid for him. And thank you very much. But that's why me and Mike are laughing about him. He, he can sleep through a tornado, believe me. Oh, yeah. Well, I've yeah. got a bus steered him. Yeah. And that happened when I blew my ear out with a rocket launcher, right? A high explosive anti tank with the weird defenders, right? Yeah. And I should have sued the army for a lot of money, but I never just kept quiet. I was a young guy. Yeah. And uh, 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 Charlie G was a uh, Charles Gustav, right? Carly Gustav, Charlie G, right? Come from Sweden, right? Right. Uh, Two man team. You held it, and the guy put the round in, high explosive anti tank, the tank and pierced it. So when the guy said, with tank action, I was meant to get these ear defenders, most of because it's a big round. Right. Not time. Being young and naive, I've just went seen the tank come down the ramp. Oh, boom, boom, blew my two eardrums right out, right? Yeah. Or death. Stone death for three days. That's scary. That came back. Must be you lose your balance, don't you, when you're eating No, I was saying the people were going up. Yeah. I'm scared of a reporter because I was young as well. Yeah. I was saying, 1918, I'm going to get in trouble here. I'm going to get a blame, I'm going to get a trouble, whatever. She had your defenders on and that. Uh, I should have just reported it, but I never met, and uh, that was a story which uh, when I blew my ear from it. So you could have called you anything you want for three days because you've been hate now, could you? <laughs> well, the call was a whack for our team anyway. <laughs> you do that, don't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 So what was the best part in the... I thought the guy was brushing his teeth when he was doing that, look. <laughs> what was the best part in the army? Any funny stuff? Oh, there was always funny stuff. Yeah. Listen, I'm in a room right and uh, a lot of guys used to keep a uh, little white R.A.T. Long tails, we call them, lickies. I told them, I'd call them my own name, right? Yeah. And the travelling community of grass, what I'm to say here, and R.A.T., a long tail, a lucky, right? When you pronounce that R.A.T., you understand what I'm talking about, but they get the white ones, right? Little pet ones. And they put them out the windows at night and give them parachute jumps. So, oh, he's had nine jumps and he's had seven jumps and they give them American wings and he jumped in America and they sneak them in America and give American jumps and everything, right? Oh, it was fucking crazy. So on my first night in the bar, I'm all young. And I'd been in 15 part a year and I thought I'd seen it all because I had no wings when I went down to the battalion. Well, the devil took them off us and then I'd tell them again, right? So I'd only did 34 jumps before he even went to the battalion. Done 17 in one part, and I done an half. We could sim, well, 16, 17. Well, when we're we'll crossing up four and a half to one part, so yeah, I had a lot of jumps. Anyway, on that one, Kate uh, Mathis just saying, How long was Gabby in the power spot? How long did you do in the well, power spot? Well, we lost him here. So, because I'm a young guy and, and I'm at the bar, right? And I'm 17, and I'm sitting like that, well, 17 and a half, 15 part, and I went down to one part at 18. Bums up, guys, half, put them up. 18 and a half, and then when I left there after a, a four year after, and one part of four years signed off, and then I went over to French Foreign Legion. So I'm in the bar having a pint, and I'm happy with the big boys, and this guy's got a spider here. What? Turn on, what do you leave with? I'm like, oh. This one's got, she's it running along the bar, I went. That was the more thought was. Oh, that's all right. Next minute he's got it and he's top he's leaving a pocket like that, his airborne jacket, and everyone wore them green airborns. And I'm going, this can't be happening. I mean, I've just seen a tarantula. I've just seen a fucking you know, a rodent, an R18. I was, I was scared to go to my bed that night. I was lying in a bed like that. <laughs> I was in Durham once when I was in sorry, when I was in um Walt, Walton in Liverpool. I was in there, a big one of them RATs you've just mentioned. About that big ran across the wall. I went, what well, was one of these things? And he went, I said, you should have the catcher in. He said, he's already in. He's doing three months. He's next door. He can beat his wife up. Pulled <laughs> 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 them all over the place. <laughs> that was a true story. <laughs> Dickie, the cold, the SO. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Bro, yeah. I'll tell you, someone, I've got a lovely post of a guy on a... Uh, don't forget to push the like button, guys. A lovely post, and I sent it to you about the guy on the doors. Yeah. And the guy says, uh, I met a, a bouncer on the door up in a place called Kerry Moore, and the nightclub was called the Oak. He says, and I got a fucking bad doing for this bouncer. He goes, and I believe it was a guy called Taz. So I give him a lovely reply back going, I remember a certain guy in that OG. And the nightclub was called the Oak. And Kerry Moore put a certain Taz through the 
speakers we one dig, and I was the best Ecto I'd ever had. Ecto was just starting to kick in when he hit us and he put his legs through the fucking speakers. Fucks. So shout out to you, mate. You know who you are, Mr. Scott Allen. Peace out. Good lad. So, yeah, yeah. Anything else you want to speak about? Um, be here all day, mate, right? And, it's um, all right. We've got all day. We've had plenty of sleep. <laughs> I was speaking to, uh, I was speaking to, I'll give a shout out to a legend yeah. from Scotland, a guy called yeah. Johnny Boy Steel, right? And his brother was infamous, uh, a guy called Joe Steel, good friend of mine, and he got uh, accused of the ice cream wars, yeah? And he got a life sentence and he was innocent. I mean, a guy called T.C. Campbell. And they both of them won their case. Yeah. Right. Fact. So I was speaking to Joe last night and he's doing a rerun of the book what he wrote. And I says to him, see the book you've put up there, rewrote the bird that never flew. Yeah. I read your original book in the digger, in a Victorian digger in the halls of Seal. That's a fact. Yeah, your book's coming out soon, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Mercenaries of Baghdad will definitely be out this year. And I have no might be getting one on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, any more tributes to any guys up there you were with? See, guys get confused with the the, the naughty day, so let, let, let me just explain it to them, right? Don't forget to push the like button. I was in guys. the part of guys, right? Z McPhee asked a question there, right? So, I'm trying yeah. to link on to that. Like, so, guys, um, yeah, for the part of cadets, I went into a thing called uh, the 15th part of Scottish Volunteer Regiment, right? And they were a the territorial. But very highly, highly qualified, and they went down all the sort, and they done the training with the regulars, like the TA Marines, the Royal Marine regulars take them through to put them to let them wear the green berry, right? So yeah. you're going to wear a red berry, they're going to meet you, do the training, yeah. and the melon, the boxing, and all the rest that you do, the log race, the stretcher race, and all the rest of the tests. P Company is one of the hardest tests in the world, guys. Fuck. So I passed out first time you. 15 par and then I went back down a year and a half later and done it all again in one par passed that again got sent to the 1st Battalion so as I said I was always looking for action guys after four years in one par I went to the French Foreign Legion and then through uh, also deserted that and there's something that's probably bothered his own life why I deserted it but I'm going to tell you the story the reason I deserted this is the, the French Foreign Legion, Legion yeah. yeah the reason I deserted it after passing up and doing all the hard but down to the South Pyrenees and doing 180 uh, uh, km march over uh, two days. And it's a horrendous march because the Pyrenees are like that, south, yeah. south of Spain. And they take you to a farm, it's called the Zars, and the Lisioners farm. And I got my pack ties from the old Castel, but the Castel Nodri is in the new one. And okay, they don't hit you there, but they hit you when they get you outside, trust me. No punishment, still, still go, guys. You still get leathered every day of the week. I was lucky I never, because they seen I had a parachute regiment tattoo, so they knew I was a trained soldier. So I got left alone. So, on that one, mate, this is a true story. I came with the tent, and I'll never forget when I was a kid, my mother says, She yeah, speaking at that, that spit. She wanted to get you in ball, son. Yeah. And I came with the tent, and mate. <laughs> Bounced straight off the corporal chef's boot. Oh mate, you couldn't write this fucking up. This is like this is like just spitting eye of the queen. Right? So you get a thing in the foreign legion called presentoir. So you, you come to attention, look him in the eyes, presentoir, these are not all, we one of these surveys, did you come these six and the money? Oh he's all this, waiting on all this. I never even heard that but uppercut, clean under the chin, sparkled his right, I'm lying there, I'm like jumping to the movies, all the birds, tweet, 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 tweet. Yeah. Why not? Out cold, woke up about four hours later, and no, I'm on a mission, I'm going to fucking murder this guy. He's getting it. But I done a sensible thing, went and put my FAMAS, the right foot that time, the FAMAS over in France, put it in the armory, so I was going AWOL, I wasn't carrying a weapon. And that night I went over the fence, and I went AWOL, and it took his 18 days to get back to Dundee with no passport, no apple, I went over the Alps, two days to cross the Swiss Alps. And, and then I still was 700 miles to get from there to Rome, to Italy, and made it home to Rome. Something like Alvarambo film, Gary, isn't it? can I just ask you, there's a lad called How of Be Lads. What wreck was you in in the Legion? I was in the first foreign Legion Engineers Regiment, but he was also in two para. 
Yeah, he did. What's he done? He's called um, Havenby. Ask him what year he was in. Ask, what year were you in Havenby? Don't forget to push the like button, guys. We're only 57 years in, there's 74 on. Someone's asking why he called you Doug Blue. Because he's a blue stuffy. Right. Easy answer. Yeah. <laughs> he was Blackie asking. for called Blackie. <laughs> I would have to know what year you were in, mate. Have you were in Premier Rec or have you were in Dizzy Rec? Haven't be lad, he's called. What? Haven't be lad, if you just ask him. Haven't be lad. Haven't be lad. Can't find him. Yeah. He Can't just asked the question. He was in two para and then he was in the Power Legion. He must have been back up that way then, mate. Was he? Yeah, have you scrolled down there? Yeah. He said it was the best choice he made. No, I should just come down for you. No. no. Yeah, I've gone up. I can't use these things, mate. Things with my hands are too. I'll leave it, mate. Just leave it. We'll knock it out. I'm the only one who can do it. <laughs> That's that, too. Z McPhee. Good, mate. I'm brilliant. I'm even better when I get slashed tonight. Yeah. Yeah. People have asked us what about their marks are on my trigger finger, mate. That's my, my code to get in the house, you know. Oh, is it? On the barcode. <laughs> barcode, yeah. yeah. The police were like, oh, what's your, what's, is that a new tattoo you began? I goes, yeah, I get locked out a lot, mate, as a barcode. <laughs> that fucking shit would have believed it as well. <laughs> fucking half witch. Because they look like a barcode guy. It's called a trigger finger for a reason, eh? Kills. Fucking clowns. Yeah. Anyway, mate, you were asking about the Foreign Legion, and I'd have to know what year you were in. Yeah, you want to know. Yeah, because there's so many Dundee mates of mine in the French Foreign Legion, and even my best mates over there dead now. Gary, Gary White, God rest him, Gunji, Capro Chef, Gary White from Charleston is buried in Lochie, Balgy Hill. And Gary's a friend, a good mate of mine, Gus McGregor. What year was it? Derek Ferger. These were the early days, 87. And Key Command on the. Um He's asking those questions. He's, he was in the Green Howards for like 15 years, but he knew a lad who went uh, AWOL from the Green Howards and went into the French Foreign Legion. Yeah, but it's yeah. really years, darling, because yeah, yeah. even more discussed now it was there, but he was there in the 70s. Yes, I need more years what, off your people. What, 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 was, what was the train like in the, in the French Foreign Yeah, I know was... Gary Miles, right? Tell, tell McDonald Gary Miles doing it for years. Right. Was he in the army, lad? No, no. Oh. Jailbird. <laughs> it's another army. <laughs> it's that army. Yeah. yeah, so I was going to say to you, so when you're in with these guys in the French Foreign Legion, what was the training like in there? Was it severe? Was, was it hard? Very, very, very hard. Was one it, one, of, the the first, one of the first regiments or, or battalions or whatever you want to call them in the world, and I'll tell you why. Every day at five in the morning, you'd be on that place where it didn't matter who you were. Oh, well, the colour yeah, the colour went up the flag. Right. The bugle, play the bugle, and I went and that was the boot. A crochet, a bit, well, I do wear a crochet, so you cut that. About, about turn, right? Then we do the twat. And you about turn, then I was on a bunt, forward on a bunt, but alley, 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 and away you went. And the pace was set off at a horrendous pace. It was pace. the heat, horrendous. Oh, it was yeah. horrendous, yeah. So the fans. Did you have them things on, like the Arab? You just got a pair of pumpies, a yeah. pair of shorts, and a, and a vest. Right. And because uh, uh, the heat was horrendous. Right. And I'm not unlucky. I've done my parachute regiment training in summertime. The TA had done it in the regulars in summertime, and I've done the Foreign Legion in summertime. Right. I'm not fucking stupid. I couldn't even work out the dates. <laughs> so, what was the hardest out of them all? They all, they all have different. I'm parachute regiment to the day I die, right? right. How could a part of going to the French Foreign Legion? You remember this, guys. I'm not slitting the Legion here, right? But how can you go into a hat regiment, a hat, who is given a berry when he, he gets given a green berry the day he enters it? We get given a cabbage hat and we earn our berry 12 months later. 12, 12 weeks later, three months later, we, we do P Company. And we earn our maroon berry, our red berry. That is what we get, yeah. That's now, nice. I know I earned my Kepi Blanc, and I've, I've done all that, and i passed that. But for me, to ever try and put you in the parachute regiment, you think you parachute? Come yeah. on, guys. Best, did, best did, fighting regiment in the world. Did, um, Fat. Did, did, when you were in there, Gary, um, when you were training, took the 12 weeks, and a lot failed. Everybody. Ah, uh, 30, 38 have joined in, all the shot on day one and 11 were passed. Right, so that's how. 
And I'm going to be all the big lads around. I'm going to be nine and a half stone when I've done that. It's probably easier for when you're lighter, isn't it? Because it's not a day with your body. It's here, look. It's here. Man, yeah. It's here. Mind over matter. Um, you've got somebody who's physically strong in the head, mentally strong, ready to bend. It's like all the years they've done in salty and digger and, and all that. It's because you'll not bend for nothing. That's right. Right. When I used, you I used to watch the screws walking down there, right, because you'll lose track of time. After yeah. a few days, you don't know what day it is. Yeah. I used to listen. And I'm here. And as soon as I have them voices, from course, I jump up and I go, one for the grasses, one for the beasts, one for the grasses, one for the beasts. Yeah, you, you, what you do is you sat there and depressed it in your head, you get past it, beat me, and then you go, then you hear them from this, and you well, start doing press up, they're all done, right? Kind of boxing, and you look through the thing to see you go, as if you can't. And then you hear them say, Blind, you hear them say, Go to the corner. I'm fucking sick, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're lying on your bed, by this time, you're like, yeah. Go on, you fucking sausages. Yeah, you've got my friends, guys. Yeah, that's all right. And you went in the French Foreign Legion, so you're all right to speak French. Okay, but don't forget to press the like button down below, guys, or I'll send Gary down your houses. In French, it's called Don't Cool Yeah, if you've got 78 watching, 62 thumbs up, so come on, you guys. Good guys. Yeah, this lad's gone through it. All what he's done for his country is unbelievable. Like I said to you before, he's the real life Rambo. And well, be, I got, I got a movie made about the guy, and I think it will happen. I really do. It's my uncle was a part of the Falklands War, and so 100, and so was a good friend of mine from uh, Dundee, Tony Markshire. Yeah. And and our lad for Dundee died on uh, Mount Tumbledon, right? And he was a very, very uh, well known lad. Yeah, Ronnie. Have you, have you heard? Ronnie Tambini, Dundee, uh, God rest him, died on the Falklands on Mount Longden. Ah, Tumbledon, Mount Longden was a part of Tony Banks fought at Goose Green. He fought at Wireless Ridge, and he's now one of the most successful businessmen ever to come out of Scotland now. Right. Worth millions. He's done the programme, Secret Millionaire, a good mate of mine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're telling me, yeah. Yeah, good mate of mine. Yeah. Gary, do you do so. your own? Yeah, I do, yeah. 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 See you night, take care. Yeah, absolutely fine, my sis. See you good night. On the best island, Whitefield, Dundee. Somebody find my sis. Whitefield is called. Is it Whitefield? It's called. Oh my friend, Whitefield. Is that where you? George McKechnie. George McKechnie's dead. He died with a jet ski in the back of the head when he was over in Thailand on holiday. He was the army lad. No, he was oh, one right. of the first lads to put on the doors over in Dundee. Right, yeah. Comfy Kirkcaldy body over. That's where he was from. Jockey Wilson Kirkcaldy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Man. He actually invented Fenty bulls. Sham, eh? He actually invented bullseye. Jockey Wilson. Fenty Sham, he's an Alligan. Fenty Sham, is it? All right, all right, my pal. You all right there? Yeah, we've had Gary here down here today with, with Mike. It's been brilliant. Brilliant. Any more questions, guys, out there? Before he throws us up for drinking them dry. <laughs> Just going to be started, I'm going to be Terry Dick over there looking at Don's water. I'm just, I'm just going to make him bed for him. <laughs> well, I've went to sleep. I'm good we're, now. We're, we're going to stand guard at the door. I've went to sleep now. By the way, guys, that flag is my mate, Michal Kuchev. Yeah, and, can you uh, see that behind guy these guys? Mercenaries of uh, War, uh, the DVD he done on me three years ago, started all this podcast, carry on yeah. talking about. And it's great because I've met great guys like Brian. <laughs> I wouldn't have met an Emma yeah. and all these lovely people. And just one on that, uh, people were uh, making jokes about me being at the church last year, right? Yeah. Gary's a Dundee fan, you're not a United fan, that man, that man. And um, I had yeah. my son, uh, my grandson, sorry, Dre, uh, roasting marshmallows and that, the roast pitch. Oh, yeah, we're telling you the end of the week. It was brilliant. It was a big yeah. Achille and, uh, and uh, I'm a oh, what, Bible bash. What, what, what can I say? You've been to jail, you've been in the army, you've done all these things. Uh, you've been in trouble yourself, Gary, like me. What do you? What can you say that Gary Carroll of now the kids of today and the kids of tomorrow guys I'm trying, selling drugs that's why I'm here I'm trying to tell you guys I'm trying to tell you not to sell drugs I'm trying to tell you don't take the weapons we offer you to take to go with them these things are always going to happen you guys are always going to want the nice gear and the nice trainers and the brand <laughs> and whatever it is you think what, what you are all meant to get I don't know We've earned that with a lot of hard work and I want to go and take the sale and buy myself something that's what we get with a lot of years of hard work but I really think being scared to go to work at your age, sad. My son's young, 32, and he's back on a bone set. As a Brilliant. football coach, Fantastic. vetted every year to deal with the kids after humorous lies getting put on the internet last year for his, last week from a certain podcaster. Disgusting mm. lies. 
My son's yeah. a football coach, vetted, train the kids every year for the police. My wife's vetted to train every year. But you're going to get people jealous. What, with elderly, yeah. oh no, but no, a podcaster, a so called yeah. podcaster. Yeah. Half of these people disgust me who are subscribed to them because they are going to hang their heads in shame very shortly. I should know. I was in the police company within the last 48 hours yeah. on my mother's asses. So, what's my state on that one? Yeah, just for you guys out there, the best thing in the world to do is get yourself in the gym, do a bit of training. That's it. And you're going to need to get yourself an education, 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 because without being educated these days, especially in computers and things, you can't get a job. So get yourself to college, you kids. Forget about all this immaterial stuff. If you've got 10 cars, you can only drive one. If you've got 10 bedrooms, you can only sleep in one. If you've got 20 tellies, you can only watch one. So they're immaterial. A 14-inch telly is the same as a 50-inch telly. A 20 grand exactly, car is the same mate, as a exactly, car. Exactly, mate, yeah. So forget about all that immaterial. I'm at a gold fit and yours. I've got a bigger car and I've got mirror. Forget about it. Be positive, positive, positive. The way it's forward is Jesus in our hearts. Gary's got Jesus in his heart. I think Gary's here today and myself's here today to help people like you out there who think it's good to sell drugs. When you start selling drugs, you start taking them, and then you spiral in that horrible, horrible... I, I, and I'll say another yeah. thing, and this is serious, Brian, what you've sent me, another message to the young. Another message to the young. Brian said it to you. Get in and train. I trained my whole life for an early age, for a seven-year-old for being in a dojo, team a black belt with 12 year old. But it's a respect of went to the boxing after that and then all oh, the running and into the, the, the motley and all that. But, but training to me was everything. Yeah. I've never done a day training and I felt that I just wasn't alone. I felt I cheated. If I said, yeah, miss yeah. Like My missing son's church, obsessed with it. Yeah. Obsessed with that. I've never seen it. I've seen one yeah. so obsessed with it. But to the youth, Guys, I'm just asking you not know, make the mistakes I made. Unless you want to go and lie in the unit, and unless you want to go on a fucking digger and have your family get affected by the visits and come up and you visit your son behind a plastic screen, which I was there for eight months. Caught me no drugs, caught me nothing. I was there because I was too heavily involved in the jail politics. And Fact. what happens as well is if you start hanging around these people, you get guilt by association. Well so you're, done. You know, with these people. Who've Fly got the clothes and get shot with them, yeah, Brian, yeah. and that's he a fact. He said, uh, when I was going to jail, he said the right to go to jail is returning a bit of money on the, on the side. It's half these politicians should be in jail, so he just yeah, asked yeah. why he went to jail. But why he went to jail? Yeah. yeah. I went to jail, but when? Uh, I don't know, he's just... There you go. What, when? I went to jail three times. He's been yeah. to jail three times, key commander. So he'll come back up. If you could see him on the side, he's might be able to see Yeah. Yeah. So when did you first go to jail? Is that what he's on about? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, he should then. When you first went to jail? I went to jail for a stabbing at 27. Right. And did you know the Magnus for seven they were hard for? Can you ask please? Is that Stephen Kahn? I don't know. Stephen Kahn, the Magnus at seven. I'm not doing all the air. Not from not my thing. Does Gary no. think it sit down um over two seconds? This is only for fairies, it's a fucking idiot we put that one up, eh? Yeah, you booked sausage. Yeah, I was getting people fucking garbage. Yeah, but hey. Never say it to your face, mate. So I mean, uh, that's yeah. good, Stevie Boy. Looking forward to meeting you as well, mate. Nice one. Yeah, some lovely uh, questions yeah, up here. Nice for you. If I get you up for you, I'll move them up. Two seconds. Right, so there's all these. Yeah, there's all you to do. Ah, I'm going to have to learn you. Can you see? There's yeah. all these. See, that's why I need to be educated. I can't say because you've broken it off me. Yeah, it's like those. I didn't call that you touched the thing. It's like all these lovely, and they're all saying, when you're back on, they love listening to you. It's all these. So, on a... Right. Don't forget, guys, put the thumbs up. There's 90 years listening, 74 thumbs up, so someone's up, put the thumbs now up. Let's smash them thousand subs, guys. We've got to go up there. There's no bit of money. It's a bit spreading the story, yeah, guys. Yeah, we'll add Gary's link underneath this video as well. And don't forget, guys, positive, positive, positive channel. Be positive. Think positive and you'll be, and you'll get there through the day. Go to bed on the night, go positive. Get up in the morning, be positive, and the day will be positive. Carol's just saying Lee Duffy spent many months on close visits, even though he was on remand. Yeah, uh, that was the same. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? I've done close visits on remand as well. Yeah. That's because I was a oh, yeah. that was running, running the land at the time. Yeah, but that's again, again, because you're probably jumping in for the people, sticking up for them. Yeah, and, but I was innocent. I, oh, was I was innocent. Sorry, I was on the mind. I was yeah. innocent. I was, and then all the other ones. And too. Scotland did a lot. 110 day lied them, so I was innocent until proven guilty, but yeah. I still went on a digger. Yeah. That's yeah. not right. It's like me when, I'm, when they all sat down the yard for me. It was all like they sat down the yard, but I had the one who got put the block. 
120 days in the block. Oh, but... Sir, you, Rob, Lee and Vulture, what you used to do? Oh, that was a, that's for me. Uh, that, I, I've seen Vulture, I speak to Vulture the other day. Lee McPhee was in a five month through. I know you were, mate. I know Z. I remember you. Yeah. I know who you are now. Peace. Respect, bro. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, and you, then you start hanging out with people who sell drugs. You end let's up, go find the bro, you get shot with them, mate, yeah. yeah. You end up getting caught because they are running about and they're giving you a few quid, but really you're going to end up getting caught. And then if you get caught with the drugs or you lose the drugs with the police, you've got to pay them people back that money or you've lost them, right? And then you've got you coming to your house and your mum's and dad's. I've got to take off somebody else. Or your brothers and sisters. Or, right or you end up going taxing someone to pay the debt and then you're in more trouble. You can't win, so... I think we'll leave it there, Gary. I think yes, guys, this friend. has been an awesome chat and it's been good to be in the big minds. Thank you very much for coming, Gary. I'll get a bit and you're all hospitality there. from Henry's wife, and I'll tell you what, guys, I'll be seeing you this soon, eh? You okay, guys? Peace out from me, my big bro. Okay, guys, speak your soul, don't forget to put your thumbs up. Amazing stories, Gary, and hope you come back again. He will Probably. be, he will Cheers. be. It's not the, the, the end of Gary Carl, it's just the Thank beginning. Thank you. Not if it's right, I'm right. Bye bye. Cheers, bro. Boom. Get off. Yes.